Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Lil Marine's Tafsir series. Today we are starting with the Tafsir of the first Surah of 30th Juz, which is Surah An Naba. And Naba means the news. In the early days of the Prophet Muhammad's mission, the disbelievers of Mecca would get together and argue about what the Prophet Muhammad was teaching. Some people liked the message of Islam, and some became so angry that they wanted to fight against it. The most strange news for the Arabs at that time was the news that we will become alive after we die, and there will be a day of judgment when we have to answer for our deeds and what we did on this earth. This strange concept is what they used to gather and argue about and would go to the Prophet Muhammad So to answer what these people were disagreeing about, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surah An-Naba as a response to all of these questions. But the news of the hereafter was not just news for the people of Mecca at that time, but it's news for all of us today too. Almost like breaking news that you and I and everybody listening still needs to pay attention to. So let's begin with the recitation and translation of Surah An-Naba. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عما يتساءلون عن النبأ العظيم الذي هم فيه مختلفون كلا سيعلمون ثم كلا سيعلمون ألم نجعل الأرض مهادا والجبال أوتادا وخلقناكم أزواجا وجعلنا نومكم سباتا وجعلنا الليل لباسا وجعلنا النهار معاشا وبنينا فوقكم سبعا شدادا وجعلنا سراجا وهاجا وأنزلنا من المعصرات ماء ثجاجا لنخرج به حبا ونباتا the first ayah begins with What are they asking of one another? Surah an naba opens with a question to refer to the matter that people were arguing about at that time. They were questioning and arguing. What are they asking one another? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledges their questions. What are they asking? Ayah 2, they're asking about the great news. What is this great news or this great information revealed to the Prophet Muhammad The news that people are in disagreement about. So imagine whenever we hear news, it comes to us from a source. We might see news on television, we might see news on the newspaper, or somebody tells us some important news. Depending on who is telling us, we either believe the news right away, or we start thinking about whether this is real news or not. Some people believe it right away, some people it takes some time. But news, as long as you treat it as news, there is some debate about it. But imagine that this news is being given by the most truthful Rasulullah Wasallam, And it is news that he is delivering on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is the most worthy news of being spread and of being told to people. But of course, because people don't believe in Rasulullah as the messenger, and they don't truly believe that the source of this news is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're going to argue about it. Alladihum fihi mukhtalifun. They're in a disagreement about it. They didn't know, is there life? Can there be life after death? And the reason that they question it is because they don't believe the one who was telling them the news. If Allah, the most truthful, is telling us that there will be life after death, then surely as believers, we do not question it, and we know that there will be life after death. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ The answer comes from Allah. Those who continue to doubt and don't believe in this news, well, they're going to know about it. 
Whether you believe in the truth or not doesn't make you miss the truth. You're still going to experience it. You're going to find out anyways. Isn't it better if you believe in it and prepare for it? Again, they are going to find out. Allah subhanahu is reconfirming, reassuring us. You're indeed going to experience life after death. It's again emphasizing another warning. You're going to find out. Hereafter will recome. You can not believe in it. You can believe in it. Doesn't matter. There will be a day of judgment. Just as certain as the day of judgment is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then in the next couple of ayahs describes a few of his miraculous creations. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made all the things around us, just as certain as we see the things around us, that's how certain the day of judgment is going to be. So the things around us, the world around us, points to us to the certainty and the truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the next verse is ayah 6. أَلَمْ نَجْعَلِ الْأَرْضَ مِهَادًا have we not made earth a resting place? Don't we find rest in this earth? And the mountains are like pegs. So imagine nails. When you're putting up a tent and you have to put nails on the corners to keep that tent standing up. Just like that, mountains are kind of like nails on the earth spread in different parts that kind of keep the earth together and stabilize the land and balance the earth. Don't you see the mountains? Aren't they so strong and firm? Would anybody say mountains are not real? When you can see the mountains so real in front of you, these mountains make the earth stable. We can only see the tips of the mountains, but they actually go way deep down. So we shouldn't just focus on what we see, but we should recognize that there's something deep within that we can't see. And only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do that. So if he is able to make the earth, he is able to make the mountains. And it goes on, وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ azwaja. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created people in pairs. It is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he made everybody have a companion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our need of wanting companionship. And so he blessed us with pairs. And ayah 9, وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ subata. I made your sleep a means of rest. Don't we go to sleep every night and wake up in the morning? Aren't we returning every night to a state of sleepness? And we wake up every morning? Just like that, after we pass away, we will wake up again. That sleep is a constant reminder. There is wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a desire for sleep in man's nature. In order to make us fit for the work in the world, we need sleep to rest. In ayah 10, وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ libasa. We made the night like a clothing, like a covering. The night covers us up like a comfort, a rest. When it's night, we close our eyes, we wrap ourselves in blankets. The night covers the earth like a blanket. Don't we see this happen every single day? The sun rises, the sun sets, and the night happens. At nights, our bodies are covered under the darkness. It provides privacy during our sleep. SubhanAllah, the whole universe is working in harmony according to Allah SWT's wa plan and design of Allah's creation. So these are all these signs that if we really think about it, Allah SWT has the ability to create anything. And He makes the night and the day. And just as He brings the night, He brings the morning too, the next day. In Ayah 11, وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ مَعَاشًا So we have the night, a restful night, and then the day happens. It encourages us to be active and get our work done. The day has been provided by Allah to seek provision, to do work in the brightness of the sun. Allah SWT stated, only one of these blessings out of the many blessings that we have. The next ayah states, وَبَنَيْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ سَبَعًا شِدَادًا And above us there are seven layers, strong layers. If we look at the atmosphere above the earth, thinking of these strong layers, and they don't just collapse on our head. Think about it. Above us, we have planets orbiting and stars, and these are heavy, massive things in the universe that are above us, and we are being protected from the sun's rays and from these heavy things that are just orbiting around above us. None of the heavens collide with one another. Nothing falls down. This is Allah SWT's power. He keeps everything in its perfect place. وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا وَهَاجًا The next ayah, and in that, there is a burning lamp. 
It's intensely hot and intensely bright. This is referring to the sun. If we didn't have these layers protecting us from the sun, we could be burnt by the sun's heat. But subhanAllah, the amount of light that we get from the sun and the heat that we get from the sun is enough for to light up the entire side of the world and for us to see during the day. Enough for the plants to get their energy, enough to heat up in the mornings. And when that sun is gone, it becomes completely dark. Such a strong sun and we are being protected from its rays and we only get the benefit. We get the good stuff of the sun. We get the light, we get the brightness, we get the good warmth. And the rays and the burning of it, the hot, scorching burning of it, we are protected from by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he placed the earth in the perfect position in the distance that we need from the, the sun. So it's not too hot and not too cold. In ayah 14, وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُعْصِرَاتِ مَا أَنْ So we talked about the sun and who benefits from the sun other than humans, plants do. And from the plants, what else do they need? They need rain and water pouring down. So وَأَنزَلْنَا Allah SWT says, And we sent down from the rain clouds pouring water. Allah SWT not only gives us the heat and the brightness and the light, but also the rain and the water that comes from the sky and nourishes everything on earth that we benefit and we eat from later on. And Allah SWT talks about this in the next ayah. And from that, from that water that comes, Allah SWT brings forth grain and vegetation, vegetables that we eat and enjoy. And not just that. Not just food that we need to eat to keep ourselves healthy, but jannat in al gardens of so much growth. If we look at the diversity, the different kinds of plants that are, exist around us, we are stunned and in awe at how different Allah Subh'ala's creation is, how miraculous it is. The same rain water pours down from the sky, but creates so many different colors and shapes and fruits and tastes and vegetables we can't even count all by the source of the same sun and the water. And who is the source of all of that? It all comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a clear sign of the Creator's ability to restore life, to give life to us. If He's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala able to give life to all these plants, and He able to give us life in the morning with the sun, how can we ever think that He is not able to give life to those who die? So the beginning of the surah, asks us to reflect, why is this news so shocking for us? Why is the news of the hereafter, of being brought up after we die, so shocking? When there's so many way more shocking things around us in the world for us to think about, and we see it, and we witness it, and we accept it. Did anybody ever question, how come rain falls from the sky, and how can it produce all of these amazing fruits and vegetables, and how does the sun burn so brightly, and we don't burn by it? And how does every day after at night the sun comes out again? These are all miraculous, beautiful things. And just how we see this, that is exactly how we are going to one day see the day of judgment. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.